Hello, fellow garage fabbers. It's Aaron with Man Candy's Creations in the car today. My wife's car. I'm in my wife's car. Vroom, vroom. Taking a journey across Las Vegas to the other end to pick up some sheet metal for today's project. And today's project is... A custom fuel cell a very simple fuel cell 16 gauge sheet metal just a box probably six sides give or take zero sides uh, if there's anything fancy about it it's that i'm going to be using all the parts from the factory mitsubishi eclipse fuel tank that's the fuel pump assembly fuel sender because it's separate on this thing and i think bungs is the wrong word but the openings in the top of the Eclipse fuel tank. I'll be cutting those out and welding those into my tank. And I will be lining the inside of the tank with POR15 fuel tank liner. And I have not used this before, so we will be learning together. I'm almost to the metal supplier. Let's uh, let, let's get this going. Maybe I should pay attention to what the f I'm doing. <laughs> This is the current fuel tank that I'm replacing. It is the factory Mitsubishi Mighty Max fuel tank, which has been relocated to the rear to make room for the front suspension link bars. The size of this tank is fine. The location of this tank is exactly where I want it, and this entire area is going to be covered up, so I really don't care what the tank looks like. So I ask myself, why spend the time to build this tank from scratch? Because, I'm kidding, it seems counterintuitive, but I think building the tank from scratch would actually take less time than it would to modify this tank to work, which would include removing whatever rubber coating is all over the tank so that I can weld on it, completely cleaning out the fuel so it doesn't explode when I weld on it, removing, rebuilding, and replacing the top so that the Eclipse pump will attach to it, filling the existing holes, and making all that look not terrible. The first order of business is to determine what size the custom fuel tank needs to be. The air tank will be relocated further forward, but a watts link will take its place. So the area available for the fuel tank is 27 and a half inches wide and 16 inches front to back. So let's go with a 27 inch wide tank so we have some wiggle room on the sides and 16 front to back. Now we just need to determine how tall to make the tank. The Mitsubishi Eclipse tank is six inches deep where the fuel pump sits. So in order for the fuel pickup to reach the bottom of the tank, the tank needs to be six inches deep. That's going to create a couple problems. Problem number one is fuel volume. How much gas would that tank even hold? That involves math, unfortunately. I hate math and I'll probably do it wrong, but here it goes. To find volume, we have to multiply length times width times height. Before we do that, let me convert these inches to feet for ease of mathing. Length times width times height should give me volume, which is 1.499 cubed. According to the Google, a gallon of liquid takes up 0.134 cubic feet. And if we take the volume and divide it by 0.134, we should get how many gallons in this tank, which is 11.18 gallons. 11 gallons isn't bad. Who am I kidding? 11 gallons is terrible. I once drove six hours to a car show, which was far more than 11 gallons. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is that the brake I'm using is unable to bend complete boxes smaller than one foot. So if I change the six inches to 12 inches, in other words, one foot, so that my brake can handle it, that is doubling the height of the tank and therefore should be doubling the volume of the tank, which would make this 22 point something. 22 gallons is much better and my brake will be able to handle it. I bet I'm blurry. 
This solves two problems, but creates another one. As mentioned earlier, the Eclipse fuel pump was designed for a six inch deep tank. Now that the tank will be 12 inches deep, the pickup won't reach the bottom of the tank. I could modify the pump, but I don't want to modify it again if I ever need to replace it. So here's the plan. I'm going to lower the entire pump by creating a six inch deep crater in the top of the tank for the pump to mount in. This will bring the pickup to the bottom of the tank, but having a crater in the tank will create a place for water and dirt to collect. So I'm going to push this crater to the rear of the tank. So any water or debris will just run off. This will unfortunately take away some of the internal volume, kind of like that bump in the bottom of a wine bottle. What even is that? It's, it's criminal, that's what. I'm guessing I should still have about 20 gallons of fuel storage. Cat shears are a must have in a small shop. A hydraulic shear would be ideal but it would also take up half of my garage. These will fit in a drawer and you can use them at midnight without waking the neighborhood. I'm prepping the metal for the tank liner before I even start assembly. Removing oil and scuffing the surface is a wee bit easier when the metal is flat. This is the reason a 12 inch box is the absolute minimum size for this break. And this is the reason you should save your money and buy a magnetic brake. To cap the ends of the tank, rather than cutting metal to fit exactly, I'm cutting them oversized and breaking the sides to resemble baking pans, which will fit tightly inside. This makes them rigid and much easier to weld in as they hold themselves in place. The corners will need to be removed to allow the brake to make perpendicular bends. I'll be installing two baffles to prevent excessive fuel sloshing. The baffles are almost identical to the end caps, but the bottom corners are removed to allow the fuel to move slowly past them. The tops of the baffles don't reach the top of the tank. This prevents air from getting trapped, which would make it impossible to fully fill the tank. Here's where I need some help, guys. For a moment, I'm going to shift from sharing info to requesting it. I know I have a few subscribers that are professional fabricators. I've had several sheet metal projects where I chose to create a trapezoid type shape in sheet metal, just like the one I'm trying to make. This break ain't having it. I have a feeling a magnetic break could accomplish the job in several steps, but still would not be easy. Anyone have any tricks? Ooh. 
On this brake, I generally start the bends using my hands until it no longer fits the brake. And then I finish the job with a hammer and dolly in the vise. It works, but the perfection just isn't there. The math strikes again. I miscalculated something and I cut the hole for the pump recess too large. Now I've got to weld in a strip to fill the gap, which means more welding, more heat, more warpage, and more grinding. Measure twice, guys. fuel pump is installed, now I need to mount the fuel level sender. For simplicity, the sender is just an arm that tells your fuel gauge what to read. When the fuel tank is full, the float rises to the top and tells your gauge that your fuel tank is full. As the fuel drops, the float drops and tells your gauge that it's empty. The problem with this sender, which is from the Mitsubishi Eclipse, is that it was made for that 6 inch tank. If I mount this in the top of my 12 inch tank, when the float rises to the top of the tank, the gauge will read full, which is accurate. But as the tank gets half full at the six inch mark, the gauge will read empty, even though I have a half a tank left. Conversely, if I mounted this the way I did with the pump, six inches lower, instead it would read accurate when the tank was empty, but the gauge would read full even at the half full mark. What I noticed about the Eclipse sender is that in the full position, the arm is almost completely horizontal which means that I could essentially lengthen this arm any amount and the full position will be in the same spot no matter what. It could be 20 feet long and the full level will still be at the same height, which means I can lengthen the arm to reach the bottom of the tank in the empty position. I found that I would need to extend the arm seven and a half inches in order for the float to reach the bottom of the tank. I'm using a piece of steel TIG fill rod to make the extension. I'm sure the factory sender arm is treated in some way to prevent rust, and the filler rod is certainly not. So I'll be painting my extension with tank liner in hopes it doesn't rust. I would have rather replaced the entire arm with a piece of aluminum filler rod, but I couldn't get the factory arm off without damaging the sender.
There was two other bungs in the Eclipse fuel tank. Bungs is not the right word. Oh well. I cannot remember what these bungs are for, and I'm hoping I don't need them. But just in case, I'm going to weld them to the top of the tank anyways. Because once I line this tank with a POR-15, I can no longer weld on it. If the flanges are already welded onto the Flanges. Flanges. They're flanges. One point subconscious knowledge. Once the flanges are already welded to the tank, if I discover I need them, all I'll have to do is drill out the hole and I'll be good to go. If I don't need them, unfortunately, it's gonna be a little less clean looking with these welded to the top, but oh well. Maybe I can use them as some kind of fancy logo mount or something, I don't know. <laughs> fuel tank is finished and I was excited to start lining the inside of the tank with POR15 fuel tank sealer. I was excited until I read the instructions. If I follow the instructions as written, which I think I should, lining the inside of this tank will take all day. All day. All day, meaning I will set my alarm for 6 a.m. and I should be finished lining this tank around 10 p.m. All day, it's 5 p.m. It's 5 p.m. today. I don't think that I'm gonna get it done today. Instead, I'm going to quickly read the instructions and then when I'm finished, I will try to give you a bird's eye view or perhaps a worm's eye view inside the tank and show you how it turned out. <clears throat> Directions for use, drain all fuel from tank. It's a new tank, I don't have to do that. Mix one part of POR15 cleaner degreaser with one part hot water and pour into tank. Roll the tank around, then place in different positions every two hours. So the solution can cover all inside surfaces. Repeat this step. Repeat this step. Until the solution comes out clean, then rinse the tank thoroughly and permit to dry. Pour in full container of POR15 metal prep and roll the tank around. Then place the tank in different positions every half hour until the entire inside of the tank has been treated. Rinse the tank thoroughly with hot water several times, then drain and dry completely with a hair dryer or a heat gun. The tank must be completely dry inside. Stir well, then pour entire contents of POR15 fuel tank sealer. Cover the fill hole, then slowly rotate the tank to cover all surfaces and seams. Then drain for at least 30 minutes and allow 96 hours for drying. Do not reuse sealer. Well, fellow garage fabbers, unfortunately, I won't have a full day to work on this tank again until next weekend. All day. And this episode has already taken me far too long to create. So I've got to end this one here and I will reveal the finished product in the next episode. Until then, my friends, keep moving forward. <laughs>